Good morning, Sofia. Good morning, my fellow citizens of European Union. And uh, thank you very much for subscribing to this uh, podcast. I appreciate that. Mm, by the way, now is the time to hit the subscribe button. Um, today we'll talk about Ukraine's transatlantic aspirations and we'll approach it from various perspectives. First of all, um, I would like to uh, direct your attention to recent developments in Czech Republic because uh, recently the country has changed the president, uh, the newly elected uh, Petr Pavel, the Czech president, uh, by the way, very good initials, suggested that Ukraine deserves to join NATO. And uh, he made the headlines with this statement. It's just that he also suggested that as soon as the war is over. So I'm not sure what kind of message Mr. Uh, Pavel attempted to send to the broader audiences, but the message which the Kremlin received is the same message which uh, basically Taliban received back uh, during the Obama administration when President Obama sent extra 30,000 troops, uh, American troops, to finish the job, but he stipulated that within three, four years, uh, these extra troops will be withdrawn and the job will be done and everyone will live happily after. It's just that, uh, as we remember, two years ago, the former president of uh, Afghanistan, Mr. Ashraf Ghani, fled the country uh, and left Taliban in charge. So um, that meant the end of uh, democracy, nation-building project in Afghanistan. So I'm not sure what kind of message the Czech Republic uh, president-elect Petr Pavel wanted to send, but definitely this was the message which is basically uh, suggested by, by such uh, policymakers like John Mersheimer or uh, Henry Kissinger. Because basically, if you recall uh, Professor Mersheimer, and his argument that this West policy of NATO expansion and the deployment of the missile defense systems that uh, infuriated Russia and led it to annexation of Crimea and the su su support for uh, separatists in eastern Ukraine. Um, I don't think that he intended to, to, uh, to make this clear that Ukraine is not welcome in NATO. But that's how it sounded. It sounded like a Merschheimer um, suggestion that uh, basically the West is to be blamed for Russian uh, aggression uh, in, in Ukraine. In the meantime, um, Henry Kissinger came up recently with the plan, the peace plan uh, for Ukraine that suggested that uh, both parties should withdraw to the lines of pre-February 2022 uh, aggression, basically, which would ma mean Crimea and Eastern territories, Luhansk and Donetsk, being incorporated to Russian Federation. So this was rejected by Ukrainian side very strongly, basically. So the question is, what kind of offer can the West make to Ukraine? Surely President Zelensky wants uh, Ukraine to be accepted to NATO and European Union today. But this doesn't happen uh, overnight, basically. It, it doesn't sound like a realistic uh, policy from the perspective of Western countries, for sure. So if anyone asked, should Ukraine be allowed to join NATO today? The answer is categorically no, because NATO cannot admit a country that is currently at war. And whether we like Merschheimer and Kissinger or not, this is the reality, because that's the rules and regulations within the transatlantic community, basically. So, as long as the Russian war in Ukraine will go on, and it seems that it's not going to end anytime soon, uh, Ukraine cannot be admitted to NATO, because otherwise the whole NATO would be at war with Russia. And Currently, NATO can support Ukraine behind the scenes and do exactly what we are doing now. Maybe we could do more to support the Ukrainian territorial integrity and sovereignty. 
and we could send more support to Ukraine to make it clear to Mr. Vladimir Putin that enough is enough. In the meantime, there is a question about uh, EU membership. And as much as Ukrainians would want to be accepted to this uh, organization straight away, um, it takes some time to, to be admitted. Um, according to Copenhagen criteria, um, there is several conditions, as a matter of fact. And in order to fulfill all of these criteria, it normally takes between 10, 15 to 20, 25 years. And if we extend the same principle of fairness, like we apply to Spain, Poland, Czech Republic, Slovakia, Bulgaria and Romania some time ago, Ukraine first should fulfill those criteria which we ask many <clears throat> Balkan countries to fulfill first and then its membership should be considered. In the meantime, what is more important, what is more essential from the perspective of Ukraine future is making sure that Ukraine's right to self-determination and territorial integrity will be preserved. And according to President Biden, that should be um, our project, our agenda, as long as it takes. And as an academic, grassroots activist and author, I, I believe that we have the power to make that happen and support Ukrainian people in this battle. But it has to be from grassroots. And uh, it has to basically involve hard work, perseverance, and patience, basically. So uh, the, roadmap, the roadmap to European Union is something which is definitely uh, attainable. Uh, most probably that will happen within the next 15, 20 years. By the year of 2040, Ukraine should be a fully integrated member of European Union. What we can do in order to support this cause is to influence our uh, members of European Parliament. There is 705 of them uh, within the whole European U Union. Countries such as Germany have 96 uh, MPs, uh, Hungary for instance 21, Malta has na six, and Bulgaria, Bulgaria has 17 members of parliament. So if we write letters to them and I suggest them to put the Ukraine's membership uh, project on fast track, maybe this will speed up the process. The question is also, what kind of organization European Union becomes? Are we more bureaucratic, semi-federation, or are we the organization which is based on mutually shared values and principles of state sovereignty and uh, respect for independence of every single state? Do we have common uh, values? Do we have common foreign policy? Because European Union of today is definitely uh, the union of many different countries various countries, different countries, countries like Greece, Hungary, uh, Spain or France are not so keen on Ukraine's membership as much as Poland, Czech Republic, Slovakia or B Baltic states. Those states would welcome Ukraine with open arms today, but as long as uh, we are talking about the full community, all 27 member states, they need to see Ukraine not as a, a candidate who only requires help, support and assistance, but as equal among, among them, as a member who contributes to the community, not only takes from community. So this is the reality, very pragmatic reality. But I think that this is something which should be taken into consideration when it comes to the um, debate in question, basically. So thank you very much for your attention and uh, stay in touch.